right now this code is not very declarative. It's very imperative. We're kind of doing these steps like I showed in the previous video where we had the spreadsheet example and then we tried to recreate it with imperative programming and then reactive programming. And in imperative programming, we had to have all these extra steps, which were kind of low level. We're kind of having the same same thing here with these set timeout calls that we talked about in the last video about how streams are both synchronous and asynchronous. And it turns out that RxJS has a better way to do this. So rather than having this subject that we create and then subscribe to, and then after the subscription is created, we next values onto it with set timeout wrappers adding delays. We can actually just do s equals interval 1000, and interval is going to be imported right from rxjs, and all this code can go away. And if we run this, we see that it essentially does the same thing as before. Uh, before we only nexted three values onto it, and this one keeps going indefinitely. We could have just as easily written an imperative loop with the previous example and, and built this same exact example. But this is how you do it declaratively instead of imperatively. So we use the interval creation operator and that creates an observable instead of a subject. So what is an observable and what is a subject exactly? Well, before we said a subject was an event emitter. So let's go ahead and go back to the subject. And let's create a second subscription. And we'll call this sub2. And we'll make this one say sub1. And just for funsies, we'll delay this subscription right here by 500 milliseconds. So we create a subject. We subscribe to it with this callback. Then after 500 milliseconds, we subscribe a second time with this callback. Um, we immediately next the value one. After 1,000 milliseconds, we next the value two. And after 2,000 milliseconds, we next the value three. So if we go ahead and run this example, you see nexting one and then subscription one received that. There was no subscription two. And the reason why is because subscription two was not created until 500 milliseconds. But the value one was nexted immediately. So this statement to create the second subscription actually runs after we nexted the value. Okay. And so we see nexting one and subscription one receives it. Nexting two, which occurred 1000 milliseconds in. And at that point, subscription two had been created and then nexting three and it, it receives the values. So let's run this again. Okay, and you see both subscription one and subscription two received that notification at the exact same moment in time. Now with observables, they're not going to receive it at the same exact moment in time. So with observables, if we go back to interval, which returns an observable instead of using a subject. And we make sure to import this. And go ahead and run that. We see that they're staggered by 500 milliseconds here. And the reason why is because this subscription actually creates its own stream separate from the stream that gets assigned to the second subscription. Each subscription creates a new stream. Unlike the subject where there was only one stream that was shared between all subscribers or multicasted, observables are unicast. Meaning when this subscribes, it gets its own set interval call.
and when this one subscribes, it gets a second set interval call. And each of those intervals that's ticking each second is pushing values only through the stream it belongs to. So if we don't subscribe at all, and we run this, the program just exits right away. Unlike the subject, where whether we subscribe or not, the code is still running and the program will not exit right away, it will wait. So let's go back to the subject and let's comment out the subscriptions and run it. So we see the code that's actually creating the values is just running right away. Even if there's no subscribers, uh, it does the same thing whether there's zero subscribers or two subscribers or a million subscribers, it will always keep pumping those values to nowhere, like it just goes into the void. But with the observable, it's more like a function until you actually call it or subscribe to it. It's not activated. And then each time you call it, it gets its own context, its own stream. So each one of those streams had its own interval that started at different points in time of when the subscription happened. So you have a subscription and then intervals, and then you have a second subscription that's offset from the first one, and it has its own intervals. And so they were staggered. And that's why you saw the behavior with the intervals that you saw. So in conclusion, an observable is like a function that you call but it returns multiple values and it pushes those values to you. A subject is more like an event emitter or event bus where it's always there regardless of how many subscribers you have. Under the hood, a subject is actually implement, implemented as an observable uh, and you can convert an observable between unicast and multicast, which we'll get into in future videos. But the core idea I want you to understand for this video at this point in learning RxJS is just that by default, subjects are event emitters where you can have n number of subscribers and they all receive the same underlying single event that gets emitted onto that subject. Or rather, there's, there's multiple events over time, but each time you emit a single value, each of the subscribers receives that value at that same moment in time. Um, with an observable, you create a whole new environment or execution context or scope, execution context or scope each time it's called or subscribed to. So that is the key difference between a subject and an observable. So just to drive this point home, we have a subject here and we know that we can do a set interval call and have this run every thousand milliseconds where it does s.next i plus plus and we'll let i equal zero. Uh, so this is just imperative code where we declare a binding called i, initialize it to zero, then we start an interval which is going to run our function every uh, one second and then we next sorry, we next the value of i and add one to it each time. We subscribe to this subject down here. And if we run this, we see it does the same thing as the using the interval uh, observable creation um, operator. So this is the same thing as just doing const s equals interval. 1000. But what is this interval 1000 doing under the hood? I mean, this is nice and all, but uh, sometimes if you have magic, too much magic in your code, it's hard to debug and it, it just doesn't, you know, quite make sense. So I want you to have a mental model of what interval is doing under the hood. So we're going to make our own interval um, operator to create an observable. And to do that, first we have to learn about observable.create. So if I do observable.create, we get an observer. And this is kind of confusing, like observable, observer, especially if English isn't your first language. The key here is the observer is the consumer and the observable is the producer. So we're creating a producer and the producer is past an instance of the consumer and it's going to push values to the consumer. So if we call this consumer and we call this producer down here, 
consumer is subscribed to the producer. Okay, and then in here we can just do consumer.next, which works a lot like our subject, where we're nexting values onto it with a couple key differences. So let's make sure this works first. Okay, and so that is more or less like what we did with the subjects, except if you notice we're inside of this observable.create. And why is that important? So <clears throat> in this example up here, you see that this set interval call has access to these two bindings which live outside of the set interval call in the closure scope. And that means that when you're working on this code, you need to be aware of not only the variables that are necessarily passed into it, but also the side effects. Like it's mutating the shared state, Maybe down here you have like another set interval that runs every 50 milliseconds and it also does I++ and maybe your, your coworker added this and your coworker didn't know that you had this in place and you didn't know that your coworker was going to add this and now both you and your coworker have separate pieces of code that are mutating the shared more or less global variable or like it lives outside the scope of the code where it's used. So it's for all intents and purposes global. And so ideally we don't want to have this problem where I've created some code, but now there's this variable living outside of the scope that like other people could, could change and, and break my code. Um, so how do we avoid this side effect where we're bringing I in from the side into our function? Well, with our observable, if we do i equals zero and we do i plus plus, i plus plus, i plus plus, and we subscribe two different subscribers, and we run this, we see that they each started at zero and they each got their own copy of the values. So um, each of these subscribe functions caused this function to run and the consumer that was passed to each of these was this function and this function accordingly so this callback that was passed to subscribe is passed to your observable up here as the consumer and then your observable pushes values to those consumers and each time you subscribe to this observable you get a new new scope, a new context. And there's no variable living outside of this scope coming in from the side. It reruns this every time. So you don't have the problem like you had with subjects. So to create our, um, our interval operator, we could just simply do set interval and then next the value in there and it runs every 1000 milliseconds and I'll just put one subscriber for now. And you can see we just created the interval operator. This is literally the same thing as just doing interval 1000. It's just a nicer way of doing it. But there is one thing we left off here that's important to note. And it's a reason why you should probably prefer to use RxJS operators over creating your own if if there are official operators for what you want to do which is we never clear this interval which the interval operator does for you so with this one it clears the interval if we unsubscribe which is not a concept i've introduced up until this point so if you do set timeout and let's just say after five seconds we're going to take the subscription and we're going to call unsubscribe, right? So what this is saying is we subscribe right away, but after five seconds, we unsubscribe. And now we go run this. You'll see it counts zero, one, two, three, four. After five seconds, it unsubscribes, which clears the interval for you. If we go if we go back to using the observable.create, so we have const producer equals observable.create, 
subscriber. And then we run this code. You'll see that the unsubscribe doesn't work correctly. So we did stop receiving the values. Our subscription is no longer active, but this observable is still running somewhere under the hood and that's why the program didn't terminate. Node.js knows that there are some set interval that has not been torn down and cleaned up. And so it's keeping the program alive in case it needs to do more work. And so another thing that the interval operator is doing for you under the hood is handling the unsubscription logic. So normally with set interval, you get back an interval and then in the observable create, you can return a cleanup function. And normally when you're done with your interval, you'd call clear interval on it. So we can create this cleanup function. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna, it's gonna be what your unsubscribe does. So when we call subscription.unsubscribe, it's gonna run this cleanup function that tears down the interval that was inside that observable because that observable is no longer needed. That's what unsubscribing means is we're done with this and it can be cleaned up. So this allows RxJS to clean up for us when we're done with it and we no longer need it. So now the program does exit. So rather than creating your own operator, see if there's already a built-in operator like interval that does what you want and you don't need to create your own observable creation operator. Um, if there's not an operator available, it is good to know how observables work. So the intent behind this video was to explain how you can subscribe to an observable and each observable gets its own execution context and how observables have this idea of unsubscribing or cleaning up after them. And to compare and contrast subjects and observables where subjects are multicast and they exist even if there's zero subscriptions and observables are unicast and they do not exist until you subscribe to them which is sort of like calling a function where nothing happens until you actually call it with the key difference being that you're returning more than one value uh, in a function you only return one value in an observable you return many values because it's a stream so in conclusion Subjects and observables are both streams, but they are unicast versus multicast, and observables are lazy, whereas subjects are eager. And by lazy, I mean it's not created until you call it. So that is subjects versus observables and how to create observables in RxJS.